Welcome back to episode 52 of the Block Runner Podcast. I'm your host, William, always here with your co-host, I'm And. What's up, bro? What's up, dude? So, up, man? It's like 1 o'clock in the morning, man. <laughs> <laughs> is this the latest? I think this is the latest we've ever started a podcast. This but. this is the latest. Uh, we, we've we been staying up late. Have you been staying up late the last couple of days? Uh, no. Well, the last... Five days, but like last night, I got like a twelve-hour slumber in to like catch up on all that missed sleep. Oh know? yeah, hell yeah! But I'm still tired as fuck. You know? <laughs> but yeah, we're starting late because like the time is like limited these days. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know I mean? Yeah. If, no. if you notice, dude, we're we're on a third like recorded podcast, and like none of them have come out. <laughs> 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 we're totally running out of time to like do all this stuff. You know. Yeah. A lot of responsibilities so, are piling so up. Let me ask you, why why are we running out of time? Just, I just said a lot of res- like a lot of like uh, <laughs> responsibilities just like spawned on us, you know. Uh, I mean, yeah. we we created them. That that was the segue to talk about Metazone. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, like Metazone is actually taking off, you know, like in a in a measurable way. Like, yeah, we have actual like statistics now to back up that you like to say like that we were right, you know, as far as mm-hmm. uh, you know, if you watch this podcast, we talked about Metazone frequently and it just literally started as like a little blip of an idea maybe like six six months ago or something mm-hmm. because we identified some key problems to this whole decentralized ecosystem when we first found out about it yeah and like me as a <laughs> landowner like immediately it made sense to me like we were it's missing something yeah you know and it, it, it's still evident because i'm as, as i'm talking i'm walking through decentraland and there's so much nothingness out here <laughs> Yeah, there's an abundance of of nothingness. Yeah. I mean, there's some really cool shit, but out of, like, 90,000 parcels, dude, I'd say, like, 10% of it is, like, maybe 20%. 20% is what? Populated. (sighs) You you don't think so? What do you think? What what do you mean? I mean, what do you you mean by populated? Like, Like there's there's something something besides grass and trees and rocks and stuff. Okay, then, yeah, maybe I agree with that, but would I call it populated with something? No, I wouldn't. Okay. Okay, then, okay, elaborate, dude. What do you mean? I mean, for the most part, uh, like, there's there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Clearly. Like, a lot. Clearly. Like, but, but, yeah, what I mean by, like, we were right with MetaZone is that we're getting approached by, like, people buying our metas, yeah. for one. Creators are are starting to create things and post them on our MetaZone platform, and... And then those people are buying those newly exactly. created things from yeah. the community. So uh, everything is kind of like aligning how we wanted it to, how we thought it should occur. You know, it's just, and everyone I talk to, like we have conversations with prospective buyers or sellers, yeah. or whatever, and all yeah. of them, they get it after a while. Maybe at first there's like some cloudiness. They don't understand it, but everybody gets it. Yeah. They appreciate it. They like it. And it's, it's applicable to a lot of people. Yeah. What the fuck is that? Oh, my bad. Museum district. Oh, you're, yeah, museum <laughs> district. <laughs> yeah. With the pop-ups. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, there's lots to talk about, man. Well, so so let's talk about performance. So we keep talking about performance. So Performance of what? Of the... Of MetaZone and, and everything for the past five days. So today yeah. is February 25th, five, one, o'clock, 1 o'clock in the morning. Five days post-launch. Basically. Five days post-launch. And um, so we've had a little bit of a delay of paying the, the daily winners. <laughs> yeah. And... In yeah, the idea was like you know, you would you would get paid if you won one of the games. Yeah, we give ourselves a twenty four to forty eight out forty eight hour window though to uh you know investigate daily winners, make sure they're legitimate, yeah, and valid. So let's explain that. So legitimate and valid. So yeah. every time you do a cryptocurrency transaction, you're sending, um, in this case, mana from one address to another. Mm-hmm. And if you're not aware, sometimes those transactions don't actually occur. Yeah. And so when you're interfacing with our games and our back end system is collecting all this information, mm-hmm. sometimes our back end system thinks that a game was played when uh mana wasn't actually spent. True. And so and that's natural. I mean we've we've had MetaZone up for a few months before the, the, the beta, but a lot of the stuff couldn't have been tested until the actual launch. Yeah, exactly. And so now we're trying to figure out all the little bugs that we're discovering and, and the community is helping us discover. Yeah, definitely. Especially with the games, right? Yeah. We're getting a lot of feedback with the games. And a lot of people like the games. It's just yeah. there's, there's some with, you know, glitches. Yeah. And so that's why there was a delay. Now, mm-hmm. 
in the next couple of minutes, we're going to be paying everybody. Yeah. And so how much is that total? Roughly uh, 850 mana over the last five days. Yeah. Which is, I mean, a good chunk of money if, uh, with, with all things considered. Yeah, but we're noticing uh, like an obvious taper off. Yeah. You know, day one was our biggest day. Actually, I think day uh, three... Day two. Our day one was our biggest day as a collective, but day three was our biggest day because of uh for block hole because of Anorak's tournament. Yeah, Anorak was one of our community members, and he purchased a couple of our games, but specifically for block hole, he hosted like a four day event, which is still going on now. Yep, but he announced it all over Twitter, all over the discords, and stuff like that. He did a lot of hustling work, you know what I mean, to try and make any. He, he put forth, I think, like three hundred dollars worth of his own. That's right. Fundage and like NFTs and his own rewards incentives, you That's know, right. on top of the pot. So, which is cool. Yeah. No, absolutely. So, Anorak, you know, when we first thought of doing Metazone and yeah. we came up with all these incentives, yeah. We, we sort of designed everything that you see right now with Metazone and, and like its mechanics. We designed everything to. So so that we're able to predict what people would do with Metazone. Yeah. And for example, Anorak is like perfect host. He's he's yeah. marketing, he's telling people about the game, he's doing his own little competitions for his own land. Exactly. And then the rest of us are helping him by, you know, retweeting and telling everybody to go play in his land. Yep. And so far he's had the best performance out of out of everybody. Yeah. He almost like matched our um, our own tower, our own tower, which has a fucking chest on it. Has a chest <laughs> you on know it. What I mean? <laughs> like, like that's pretty damn good. Yeah, like, that just shows you what the potential of like what what a host can do. Yeah, you know, you know. So, whether, yeah, go ahead. And then on top of that, you know, once the Central Land launched, I mean, the the night before, like the night before, we were up pretty much the whole night trying to make sure everything was ready. And uh, and we were going to live stream everything in, in Decentraland, like the whole launch and the whole chess thing. Yeah. But, you know, everybody knows about the little glitches that they had. And then the yeah. next day was a much better. It was a lot smoother because there was, like, direction. <laughs> yeah, I guess we could talk about the launch now. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to MetaZone later and, like, talk about what's so awesome about us and stuff like that. <laughs> 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 but, okay, let's go back to the launch itself. We're going back in time a few days. Okay, so let's go back to the launch. It's, uh, so for yeah, our time, it launched at 7 in the morning. Yes. I think we went to sleep, like, at 4 in the morning. You went to sleep. I did not oh, sleep Oh, you didn't sleep. Yeah, 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 you didn't I, sleep. I, couldn't, I tried, but I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, see, I was one of those people who was, like, just in so much anticipation, like I couldn't sleep. I had like the pregame jitters, you know. Yeah. So yeah, my my expectations were really high. Okay, so what were you expecting? <clears throat> Just like a clusterfuck of people, which there were at the very beginning, yeah. like at seven a.m. when they announced it, and like everyone started logging in. Yeah. Like literally, I think the boundaries of the nodes is fifty. I sw- I saw fifty. Yeah. Like whatever node I was in, I saw Maddie in there floating around, like glitched the fuck yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> I saw like some recognizable people, you know, and I was like, dude, this is cool as fuck, but it's really laggy. Yeah. And I couldn't really, nobody could do anything. Nobody could figure anything out. Because the first one that we went to, or the first one I loaded into was. um, Like Fenrir Blue? No, the first like challenge that I loaded into was that, like, it's not the volcano, but the, like, the floor is lava. Oh, the floor is lava. Yeah, I remember that. that one. That was the first one I logged in. So I walked in there, you know, and all I saw was, like, this ridiculous contraption with, like, stairs. Yeah. Like yeah. Seven floors of stairs. And I was like, dude, I really don't want to do this. With all this <laughs> lag, there's no way I could do it. Little did I know there's like a, f- it wasn't actually that. It was like the little thing on the side. All you do is tightrope. Yeah. You know, and your way to the chest. But anyways, that I was expecting something like that. Like, uh, uh, again, uh, like, like a World of Warcraft type launch event. You yeah. Know? Yeah. But nah, dude, it was hectic and laggy and all uh, kinds of stuff. I mean, I expected exactly what happened did to you? happen. Yeah. Okay, and I didn't I didn't expect anything less because I was part of all the betas. It's true. Like two days we were play testing. Yeah, no, every single day was a play test, like leading up to the launch. Yeah, every yeah, single day, and, and they were having the exact same issues during the play test. Yeah, yeah, so especially yeah, with the chess, they exactly. had the exact same issues. Yeah, like, and then and then yeah. they were able to fix it to a certain extent on the betas, mm-hmm. and uh, but it was like a hundred mana. That's what we were we were the beta testers were rewarded with, mm-hmm. and uh, but. You know, this is like, you know, much much bigger forty eight chests versus like the plate test only one chest. Yeah. 
So, um, nonetheless, you know, with all the craziness on the first day, I mean, we were able to do 200 transactions in a single day. Yeah. We, 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 that's two, what is that? 2000 mana mm-hmm. flowed into our wallets on that day because first there was a, there was a chest in our tower and second, we didn't tell anybody to play. They just played on their own because to a certain extent they understood that they could win mana by, you know, being the leader. Yeah. I think we need to make it clear too, like, um, cause I, I know nobody was focused on like actually like going into details of like what, what the scenes are about. Mm-hmm. Everyone was focused on this chest. So we had a lot of stuff like instructionals, basically how to slides that we like s- spliced into our scene the day before. Yeah. Because yeah, we got some feedback and like from some beta testers that like these games that were not, they're, super, they're like, not intuitive. They're not as easy as we thought. You know, a lot of people had difficulty like figuring, like they would go in. So what we did to kind of counteract that, that non intuitiveness is like we upped the free, yeah, uh, free, free attempts you get to like yeah. five. Like so if like you, if you so, whip yeah so so like if you're on the block runner and you're jumping the walls you have to jump at least five in a row and in then, order for it to count as a yeah. loss and then like the cl- or the, uh, the you know it's the score starts ticking once you get past five yeah exactly because a lot of people well, they would just pay ten mana and they would lose they would in the fail first round. in the first attempt because they don't know what the fuck they're doing right so yeah. like the, we were like dude we gotta fix that yeah so we did and that was a huge improvement because like we. We looked at our own uh, leaderboard statistics, and like no longer were we seeing like these super low scores. Like the scores average started going up like bigly. Yeah, you know, like in the tens and twelves kind of thing. Yeah, for sure. Like at least they got like a little flow going. They might have failed and been like, "Dang, I suck at this. I'm out." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. But some people are actually like addictively playing these games, which is awesome. Yeah, you know? yeah. There's a couple of guys who are consistently winning the daily pot. <laughs> yeah, I think we got one dude, Red Nitrous. I think he won three of the days for one of the games. Another one called uh, Our, studios. Our Studios. He also, I think, won three of the games. Crypto Joe won two, like two or three. Yeah, so we got like some some uh, tryhards. Yeah, <laughs> which is cool, you know. So yeah, and and you know, I was I was telling there's there's a strategy to it. If you're gonna be there playing is. this game. You don't want to necessarily blow everybody out of the water with like a thousand jumps, like then, at the very beginning. At the very beginning, because then nobody was going to play. It's true. So you want to you want to do like an auction. You want to like bid low, and then work your way up. Yeah. And that's how you that's how you earn most of the mana. So yeah. <clears throat> anyway, we're getting a little too deep on on the gameplay, but uh, the point is that day. That, so in the first twelve hours, we got two hundred transactions. By the by, the end of the day, we got nearly four hundred transactions. At the end of the first day, yeah. And I'm willing to bet we're the only ones who were doing that kind of volume in transactions on our parcel. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think because of that, there was a lot more people buying metas or buying our games. Yeah, it's true. I heard some feedback. They're like, some people were asking me, like, hey, is that actual? I guess because they saw the leaderboards like filled up and like, uh, like, is it cost money to play? Like they're asking me that. Yeah. And like, yeah, payments are activated. So it's like all those people on the leaderboard paid. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, maybe they couldn't believe it. So they're like, shit. Now I'm like kind of interested now, right? Yeah. Because the whole idea is, you know, you should be able to do that on your own land, right? You don't have yeah. to come to our land to do that. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> and so. Now that we there's there's some a lot more interest in in the metas, people are buying them and they're deploying them, and there's there's work that needs to be done in the sense that if you're a landowner and you deploy these games, you can't just let it sit there. Yeah. Because people don't know that it exists just because you deploy a block runner on your land in some like you know random location, people yeah. are not going to show up and play because they don't know that it's there. At least right now, while this chest thing is like the main incentive for decentral land, because Everyone's typing slash go to, so nobody, no, hardly anybody's roaming. Yeah. Right. Whether, so, I mean, we have to debate here whether or not once these chests go away here in a couple of days, like what's going to happen? Yeah. I mean, that's up for debate and we don't know. We're just speculating. I, I yeah. don't have a very optimistic yeah. uh, projection. <laughs> I feel like your, your pessimism has, is starting to rub off onto you. Yeah. yeah. Like just, no, and, and it's really because like Decentraland, it's a big place. Yeah. It's a big place. And there's only a few things worth going back and revisiting. Mm-hmm. And that few things I can count and literally exist in MetaZone. Mm. Like what 
what other reason is there to be back in in Decentraland? Yeah, meaning like that's the only thing I could think of where you have actual an actual potential to at least earn some kind of mana. Yeah. And that, that's what I've said on multiple podcasts in the past, dude. Like that in order for Decentraland to succeed, it can't just be a place where everyone's like, Give me your money. It's gotta be yeah. like you come in and you could get grind. Some, you can grind your grind way to something. something. That's exactly what this whole chess experiment proved to me. Yeah. Because you know, I have people, my own friends. People were yeah. grinding, that's for sure. Even people like Normie, my, my regular friends, like they, they came on the platform because I told them like, guys, it's launch day. All this shit you've been like hearing me spew over the last few months, like you can finally see what it is. Yeah. And they came in. At first, they were like, oh, shit. You know, like this is, like, they actually said like, this is actually really cool. Like, I think they thought it was going to be super good first, yeah. like super lame, but it wasn't. It was like, they, it, it clicked in their brains. Like, dude, this is cool. Like I'm grinding. I'm doing these uh, interesting puzzle looking things. And I'm getting uh, a chest as a reward. Mm -hmm. The first one was cool. It was a green little item, like a t-shirt, yeah. 10 mana. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm getting cryptocurrency for free. Yeah. Like, That's this is cool. But then, like... See, but the thing is that that is not sustainable. Giving yeah, out no. mana is not yeah. sustainable. You can't, you can't just give out all your funds. So you could yeah, you'd run out. Business. Yeah, you'd yeah. run out. It's over. I agree. So we've got to think of something. <laughs> well, that something was what we came out with with MetaZone, right? Yeah, but, that's one of them. Yeah. So so let's let's be transparent. So we uh we play we we were in the competition for the game jam. Yes. We got fifth place. We got fifty thousand mana. That was like in July or something. Really, it was in July. Something like that. August. I don't know. Let's call it August. So we got fifty thousand mana, and it was basically. Uh, it it was uh, basically fifty thousand mana for several months, so the 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 wallet balance never changed. Yeah, right, because we're in beta now. All of a sudden, February comes around, February twentieth, Decentraland launches. We were preparing for this for six, seven months, whatever it was, and uh, we've. I feel like we capitalized. Mm -hmm. I feel like uh, we we're the only ones doing anything of interest, to be honest. And um, the we ended. At, with with five days under our belt in Decentraland, we've essentially doubled our wallet to over a hundred thousand mana. Mm. So that just goes to show that I want I want Decentraland to see this and understand the value is in the SDK and nothing else. There is no value in the builder, mm -hmm. none. As a matter of fact, the builder's stuff was essentially the most glitchiest thing. That I could have imagined. You're bringing up some golden points right now. Keep going. And <laughs> there, there is absolutely no value in the builder in any sort of way. Only I would okay. rather have a, literally an empty world of a vast greenness okay. than builder stuff. Yeah, some of that was like painfully painful. Like, oh, the only thing that made it, this is another problem. It was some of those scenes, those builder scenes were so difficult and like almost near impossible that like if you were just a regular player and you weren't in like the Decentraland Discord, yeah, that's why most of them gave up and like never, probably never to return because they, it wasn't clear like why you're going through all this struggle because like <laughs> yeah. we knew internally. Oh yeah, we knew because we've been in the beta, we knew yeah. it was glitchy, we, we knew everything. And we're in the Discord and like they're giving us constant updates like, hey, we know you're getting a bunch of empty chests, but there's a reason for this. Like, you know, we're yeah. keeping track of your chest progression. Once you finish it, then you're going to get rewarded That's with right. like, the best stuff. That's right. But my friends didn't know that. They didn't. We're neither, not in the Discord. Neither did we, not until the second day. Exactly. We didn't even know that. I didn't understand how the chest mechanics worked. I, I honestly, I was like, cheesing i like i found the easiest yeah. ones and i just made a bunch of different accounts and i just farmed the easiest, the ones, easiest ones yeah thinking maybe i'll get lucky and get a mythic sure out of the easy ones but that's not how it that's not how it worked right? it was literally like if you're if you're doing the easy ones you get dust literally all those t-shirts and hoodies and hats they turned into dust like less than 10 mana each you yeah. know imagine playing world of warcraft and you didn't know what the quest was <laughs> think yeah, about it yeah think about that so you're 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 tasked to do something you just don't know what that is or like that's exactly what happened in the central land exactly it's like that, there's that. these chests out there go to next and then you're off or like it tells you in the in the quest log like once you achieve if you finish this thing this obstacle you're going to be rewarded and it shows you a chest but by the time you get there you open it and it's freaking nothing yeah to a regular player that is like infuriating shit especially if like what they just went through is like mind-numbingly difficult yeah 
you know, you got to reward them some like with something. Like one of my friends has said, like just something, like just 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 ten mana. Yeah. And I would have been happy to go on to, like to hit go next, but it frustrated him to no end that he just he gave up and he quit. Yeah. No, and I, he's I, never. Well, he might come back one day, but not in the near future, especially yeah. when these chests are gone. You know. And and everything since the beginning with MetaZone and and everything they've done with Decentraland, it's always been about building something where people want to return. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Right? It's replayable experiences. It's the only thing that we build. We, we don't build anything else mm -hmm. because it's not worth it. So, yeah, I think you say the builder has no, but I, I'm going to go out and say I, I, I saw some benefit to the builder, again, witnessing my friends play. Because, again, like they, they equated this, uh, this chess experience, like just like a quest line experience in, in like World of Warcraft. Mm-hmm. And a lot of these builder scenes, like, they were arranged, like, exactly like a quest would be, like, in an MMO. I mean, like, you interact with something, and it tells you, like, a little, hey, like, go over here, pick up this carrot, give it to me, and mm -hmm. then move on to the next step. So without that, like, <clears throat> you know, but the problem with that is... The only but, okay, so those experience, you would think that they would have fluid experiences. Were they fluid? No, not necessarily, but it's okay to be difficult. Like, you know, in MMOs, there's difficult No, no, no. I'm talking about the interaction with the little characters. Like, none of it was... There's a lot of... Sh yeah, there's I a lot mean, of problems, but... Uh, everything was, like, just janky. The whole thing. Yeah, it wasn't polished, for sure. You know? But, like, we get that. So, so think of it the, the opposite. Like, I understand what you're saying, like, the whole quest thing, but it can be done with the SDK. Yeah, but it's more difficult. You know, well, yeah, it takes a developer to do exactly. it exactly. So at least they put out this builder. So like, but imagine I launched. There was this. At least there was this. Imagine if there was no this. Well, yeah, and I mean, it was just launched. But that's the thing. It's like focusing on the right stuff. Like, so here, here's yeah. what I mean. Okay. So let's say that um, the central line was focused on developer development, right? Yeah, Developers. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. You would enter the world, and this it would be a vast green land of a, of a, an empty canvas. And you would let the developers figure out how to fill that canvas with something. And I think that would be a far more interesting experience to go and see things that developers just came up with, with just an SDK and, and an empty canvas. Mm. And, and I know the point of the builder was to create some interaction with people. Yeah, let's create some kind of experience for them, right? But, but think about a website. The general population does not build websites true they and and those and those that do with like squarespace and all these other website builders they're boring mm. right the 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 good websites are done by developers and uh so so that's what i'm saying is like this is really a platform for developers and nothing else i agree and and we have the reason why i can say that with confidence is because we just made fifty thousand mana in five days yeah I mean, who else can say that? I mean, other as than as yeah, other than people flipping their mythics, or the land and stuff like that. People, or, or people the land, just yeah. flipping assets, basically. Yeah, yeah. As far as like actually generating um, some kind of value out of nothing on this platform, yeah, I, I think it's safe to say we're the first. If we're not, then please correct us. Yeah, point us well, to yeah. somebody else who's like uh, you know doing something. Like you call Equal, it sustainable, uh, yeah. You know, I, I want to know about those projects so I I can learn more, like other methods. But as far as we know, like this is it, like so far. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I I know this isn't like the only way to do it. This I can't have, be the only way. This is just one of the ways. This is our way. This our is how way, we yeah. thought of it, and yeah, it's not perfect. Yeah, it, it's it's cool. It's fun. I think it's great. And I yeah, want go go to our Discord. I mean, people are telling us that it's not perfect. <laughs> and it's true. And so that feedback is helpful. It is. Right. So we're not saying like we've everything we've done is perfect, but the the things that we've designed and built has worked. Yeah. Right. And it has some elements of sustainability. But what we need is more creators. Agreed. More developers, more artists, more everything, because we have people in our Discord, we have people part of MetaZone who want to buy stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we have a guy who just bought a house, and he literally wants to deck the fuck out of it. But we're like, with what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with what? Like he, exactly. I mean, he has his own art. Like, he wants to display everywhere, but I'm assuming yeah. that's not... He, he wants more than that. Like, yeah. I mean, we could probably put up the art for him somehow, but that's, like, custom work and stuff. That's not, like, how this is supposed to yeah. work. 
You know, at some point in the future, he sh- he'll probably be able to deploy his own custom artwork and stuff on, in, into Ameda. Yeah. But not yet. But the point is, like, I mean, there's a lot of opportunity there for somebody to create some kind of, like, we already have requests for people to create, like, jukeboxes because they want to have, like, uh, yeah. Like either like a lounge or something or like a club or something like this. So they need like little and little not, things here and there. Not only that, Crunch he made Omniboard and that thing's held, selling like hotcakes. It is, yeah. And uh, there's still a whole lot of stuff to be you know added to to Omniboard, but it's essentially a, an advertising platform where users will be able to put up an advertisement with a, just an interface. Yeah, they submit a picture. They tell uh, the Omniboard that they want that picture to be on there for a month. Mm-hmm. And uh, you select how many Omni boards scattered throughout the central land you want to exist on. You pay for that existence for a month, and that's it. Yeah. All that is governed by like smart contracts eventually, uh, but right now our our backend system, and uh, you know, and this this meta this thing this um, Omni board that you deploy on your own land makes you money because there is a valid point to advertise. Mm-hmm. Right. If if no one knows that you exist, no one is going to come to your parcel. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, we've seen that. We've seen that evidence. Yeah. So, I mean, from what I see, there's a lot of potential. But if we're not doing the right things, this thing is going to fall apart. Agreed, man. And like, I, I, you know, throughout this whole Decentraline launch, I've, I've been very positive. Like and what? What do you mean? Very optimistic about how Decentraland is going to turn out. And until today, when I Man came over, <laughs> and uh, like we're just thinking about like the well, because the the after yeah. aftermath of yeah. the chest because I'm, I'm chest gate because I'm observing. I'm I'm like ultra observant person. Like I, I'm looking at everything and I'm trying to like you know add everything up in my head. Like what's what's happening right now? And and I'm seeing it because we have hosts scattered throughout the world yeah with the same games we have but they're not getting much well except for but anorak because he's actively you know bringing yeah. people to his land they're not getting much traction there and they're semi getting frustrated with that you know yeah because they spent like some money yeah so they would like to see higher numbers so i know right now what's driving traffic is this chest and yeah. again i've seen it with my friends and even the chest wasn't enough to keep them on because it was a it was a painful experience. Yeah, but you so, also have evidence of Anorak doing well in marketing <laughs> that is driving traffic in a place where there is no chest. Yeah, ex- I I agree. So but, but he was marketing to like a larger pool of players that this like started three to four days ago almost. Yeah. Whenever like probably like peak activity. Yeah. I, I and based on but, our numbers, you know these these there's like a do- obvious downward uh, drop off. Yeah, and I'm thinking once these chests are dunskies, you know, we're gonna have a a a long grind back up to where we started on day one. Yeah. You know what I mean? To get yeah. back to those kind of numbers and that kind of interest, oof. Yeah, we got a hard uh, challenge ahead of us, you know. Yeah, and it's hard to pinpoint exactly what's needed, other than like we need creators building. And that's that's all it is. Yeah, like literal custom stuff. Like there's nothing. You go to the MetaZone Tower at sixty one negative twenty seven. There's nothing builder about it, right? The, all the whole thing is custom, and it's you know from a developer, yeah, right. And and <coughs> I, I mean that's to me, yeah. Like the from, builder stuff works now because of these chests, is what I'm saying, you know. And that well, obviously can't last yeah, forever. Meaning, sure. like, would you really want to go through Coin Rush <laughs> <laughs> if there was no chest at the end of the tunnel? Yeah, you know, like, dude, that thing is like that, nightmare inducing. I, dude, you know I don't, I, mean? I don't even understand how someone. Spent that time. I, I don't. I don't understand. <laughs> dude, that thing was a, such a pain, dude. Like, if we didn't have H Provacos <laughs> or who else, uh, whoever generated that list of where all the chests are, and then just today, Decentraland released like a like keep track of your chest list. Like, if we yeah. didn't have all these tools, it would have been impossible. Yeah. I think I would. For sure. I would have given up myself, even yeah. though I'm like so deeply invested. Yeah. I, actually, I did give I, up. Yeah. So did I. I yeah. just stopped. The only reason I came back and like I'm gonna try this again it's is because, because I had a of, list and I found H Provacos' YouTube channel. I was like, yeah. oh hell yeah, dude! I'm gonna get <laughs> <laughs> it's like basically cheat codes, dude. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. can't get any better than that for sure. But but see. then let's okay, let's talk about the rewards from the chest. Uh yeah, okay. So there's a bunch more mythics. I mean, pretty much, it, it seemed like everybody got mythics. Yeah, if you completed the if you complete yeah the, the 48 chests, you were, I th- I'm pretty sure everyone was at least rewarded with some kind of mythic. So, but mythics are one out of ten, 
Yeah. So so everyone they, was, to, they must have had to keep continually pumping out new editions of Mythics, yeah. right? Because there's only ten of them. Yeah. So, and that's I, the thing. Like these these NFTs, they literally spawn out of thin air. Yeah. And somehow have value. Well, see, like like a day one, I was all happy because I got this colorful blue hat. Right? It was blue, but it had a bunch of colors on it. Yeah. I looked in the open. I looked on the market. It was selling for like four or five thousand mana. Because it was day one, it was like something new. Yeah. And I was like grinding pretty hard, so I was like one of the first ones to get one. So I was all happy. I was like, dude, it's like this is worth it. And like I got like a four or five thousand mana item here. And then day two. There's like a hundred of these fucking things on the market now. Yeah. <laughs> and all of a sudden they're selling for like five hundred a pop. I was like, oh yeah. yeah. You know, so basically like the market now is like I think there's more wearables on the market than there are people to wear them. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Huge saturation yeah. now. Because what happened is people generated new accounts. Yeah. And uh they just started mining Farm, farming. Farming chess. Yeah. Exactly. As one did in World of Warcraft and Diablo true. and true. So yeah, the only thing that actually has true value are these mythics. You know, everything else turned into dust, unfortunately. <laughs> but I guess like the speculation is, you know, these there's still only like a four, like four thousand or something of these. Yeah. Like right now is a lot, but if you if we hold on and like the player base grows like hundred thousand plus four or five years from now, these things could potentially be like actually ultra rare. Yeah. You know. And I know we got you know people like um, Boss and uh, Decentral Games making um, you know gambling games. Yeah. It's just there's got to be more than that. There just has to be more than that. Yeah, man. But I hate to like pile on to like the 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 freaking hate storm and the shit fest and all that stuff. Yeah, you know? dude. Same. I, I, like I mean, I was actually positive for the first four days. Yeah. And well, six because, hours ago, because we were doing okay. Yeah. And like we were, it was exciting for us because we were, we were watching these numbers come in. We're like every time we refresh for like 20, 30 new plays, we're like, dude, this is cool as fuck. <laughs> you know, like this is badass. It's it's working. Like yeah, we're yeah, getting yeah. like some validation for our, our, our work. Yeah. Which is cool as fuck. You know, it feels good. Yeah. But but then I start to evaluate what's going on everywhere else and I'm like I'm starting to paint a picture too. Like this really hurts for us because Yeah. We can't literally be the only thing like in the world that people can, you know, go and do something or win yeah, something potentially sustainably. Something. Because yeah, the people who win and like can figure out how to play these games well, yeah, it's great for them, but I mean everyone else is losing, mm-hmm. you know. So mm-hmm. they're not they don't want to come back and just get steamrolled. Yeah. There's, you know what I mean? Yeah. So so it's like it comes down to like how do we how do we make this sustainable? Like not even just ourselves, the center land. Yeah. It's to me like you have to invest in the SDK, and I, I know you guys. I know they're they're working on it, and I know that they have a pretty solid SDK. Obviously, we built something worth 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 the interest. Um, but but us on but like we come to, I, I, I mean, me personally, I've come to a couple like realizations. Like we have to incorporate like NFTs into our rewards yeah. and incentive. Yep. Because like no, I've it's been proven several times like NFTs is what drives like everything so far in this economy as far as like what 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 drives people in and what what makes them want to you know compete or grind whatever you want to call it yeah it's the potential for NFTs myself included like when I heard about these chests ah uh, dude I was like all in man like I we we stayed up that one night literally till like nine in the morning just <laughs> grinding chests yeah. You know? Because we thought and, maybe and we, were, we were we were going blindly. We were just like go to next and like let's see if we can figure this one out. Exactly. And then you know it's funny because it spawns you in the corner of a parcel, and then you spawn on that parcel, and then you're like on the wrong parcel looking for a chest. Exactly, dude. There were so many times like that. Like yeah, it, like it take you somewhere you think it'd be in there, but it's like somewhere completely different. Yeah. Did you ever do that one? Um, How does it look? <laughs> what like the one that you're thinking of? It had like a spaceman, like the astronaut. Oh yeah, dude! It took me so long to find that guy. Yeah, me dude. too. I was like in the maze. I was going everywhere, dude, because yeah. there's tons of stuff where it looked like there'd be chests. It's it was like, like a fest- big castle. festival land. Festival, dude. Festival land makes zero sense, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're all over the place. They got castles. They got like trees of wisdom. Or whatever yeah, that a is. maze, and then have like this like treadmill looking thing. Oh yeah, yeah. you know what? I that guess that wasn't working. <laughs> I guess if that's the idea of festival, it's just supposed to be like random as fuck. Yeah. And he pulled it off magically. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever's in control of that district. Oh, but man. yeah, I had no idea. Like there's like a tiny little entrance that like it was like a halfway pyramid. It wasn't like all the way up. I I, I, I got to be missing something. I what? don't I don't understand why people work on this stuff. What stuff? Like like that stuff. <laughs> the scenic stuff? Yeah. 
I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I think it's just like a, like a creative outlet for some people. Like they just really like to, yeah, I guess. create. You know, see, I get the art. Not everyone's like looking to make money. Basically, is what I'm saying. And f- f- to a man like you, that's hard to confuse. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you appreciate the arts as much as you should, dude. The arts are very valuable, dude. Sometimes artists just like to art, you know what I mean? Like, for no return, they're just like, wacha. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, let me just throw something out into the universe and, like, see if it sticks. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. just like, they, they, they feed off of, like, the oohs and the ahs, basically. Yeah. That's yeah. it. No, I mean, yeah. I appreciate art. Like, yeah. like some of the stuff that uh, Real Real was showing off. Yeah, man, that that was cool. Like all that art that people came came up with, and like yeah. were able to post on Decentraland, that was really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did like that. I saw a giant ass Bart Simpson in there. Yeah, that was cool as fuck when I saw yeah. that. I want to see more of that. I mean, you're not whoever built that's not getting. You're not getting. You don't have to pay ten mana to the view view <laughs> Bart. You know what I mean? He's not getting a, a return on that. It's yeah. just an artist who just wanted to throw that out there. You know? Yeah, for sure. Which is cool. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, I just uh, I, I feel like with this metaverse, I think there is a a viable way to monetize art, like for oh, yeah. for the the artist. Oh, like yeah. remember we talked about graffiti graffiti wall. Yeah, like we actually got more transact people defaced his Pikachu they, art. They did. Can I we, mean, they put any, anyway. No, it's, it's too much. I was saying yeah. we put it on the screen, but we're just talking today. Yeah, we're just talking. L- less editing, the better. Yeah, <laughs> there's so much shit to do. But yeah, my Pikachu that I, you know, I, I held near and dear to my heart, dude. Uh, who was it that put a visor on there? Yeah, first they put a visor, then someone else just came and just scribbled all over it and yeah. like, you know, just defaced it completely. But that's what I was expecting to happen. Yeah, like, yeah, same. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So it's my job now that I'm, I'm a little triggered that they <laughs> totally ruined my Pikachu. My job is to go back there and pay 10 mana and like put it back up. Yeah. So it's like a little battle back and forth between... You should put Artists. a Pikachu back up, with but like a middle finger. Middle finger, yeah. Oh shit, dude! I'm doing that right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally gonna do that. That's pretty cool. So yeah, if, poss- if I could figure out how to do that, but it shouldn't be that hard. So so going back to what I was saying, so graffiti wall actually got some traction, actually made some mana from people changing the wall, right? Yeah. And one of the ways that we we're thinking of like, inc- you know, improving it was that every time you make, uh, you know, graffiti wall, it becomes an NFT itself. And then when, when you interact with this graffiti wall, that NFT becomes an option for you to repost onto that wall. And let's say it's like someone else likes that Pikachu a lot and wants to put it up. Mm-hmm. Well, because you own that NFT, because you made it, that person who reposts it, you get some of that mana. True. I know. Yeah. I love that idea. <clears throat> for sure. Yeah. So, so we've talked about this before. I mean, that is like one unique way that artists can continuously have like some some income to some certain extent yeah i mean because like the reason why i talk about this a lot is because out in the real world what is it that we're doing uh trying to make money well that's a major part of it yeah right i mean for for the most part yeah get laid (laughs) (laughs) that's that's, like this that's pretty much the basics like (laughs) get money get laid and like Find something yummy to eat and go to sleep. That's pretty much it. <laughs> That's life, dude. Wrapped up in f- four vents. Yeah. And then, what do you do in Decentraland? And what, like, what's what would you think there is to be done in Decentraland? See, this is where me and you like defer. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, big time. Like, like you can't you can't wrap your head around the <laughs> idea of people wanting to just uh, exist, I, like like have no. their own little place to call home. I cannot. I like, can't. like we have a couple of houses for sale on MetaZone, and, and one of them is brand new, but he sold one version of it. Uh, it's like a two-story house and little nice yeah. wooden floors. You know, it's like a little California-looking bachelor pad house. And, and the house looks badass. It's a really nice. House. I mean, I would buy that house in real life. Me too. Hell I mean, yeah. it's got like a little sliding door and everything. It's got an yeah. opening door. I mean, shit. It's a badass-looking house. It is, but is it's plum empty? <laughs> you know, yeah, it's just yeah. a, it's just a shell of a house. So, but Willis doesn't get, like, why somebody would buy that and deploy that. Like, what's the point? Yeah, I just don't, well, I, I just don't understand what you're going to be doing in this house. It's, uh, like, I mean, that's, I, that's I think what, what I don't understand. What he wants to do is, like, populate it with, like, furniture yeah. and, like, a TV. It would be cool if the TV could actually display ex- external, like, external streams. Yeah. So, like, maybe, like, 
You can see, invite once, your friends over. Okay, now, now, see, yeah. if we had the capability to stream video content within Decentraland, then I would completely understand. Yeah, that's what I, when I first heard, that was the first thing that popped in my head. Planet VR, if, you, if you're freaking yeah. watching this, I still want my house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I haven't got, I mean, I'm going to submit you a, an idea or like some kind of concept work, art, whatever, now, one day. I'll challenge you. Because that's what I want, dude. I want my own little virtual uh, but house. I'll, I'll challenge you. Don't what? make it a traditional house that we can actually build in real life. This is a this is a game world. Think of a different house. Like what? Some kind of like cyberpunk house? Well, like just a house that you couldn't otherwise get. <sighs> See, that's a lot of work for people. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> but it might actually turn out like really cool looking, and maybe he'll sell a bunch of them. Yeah, I mean, just yeah. like go watch Iron Man or something. Get some inspiration there, and like, <laughs> like well, the problem is, is like no cliffs, like. Yeah, that's true. But I guess you could make one if you think about it. If you have a big enough parcel, you can make, you can a, make cliff. a giant cliff and like a and house sticking out yeah. of it. Yeah, like a little egg, dude. Not an egg, but oh, like well, like a like a flying saucer. Yeah, flying thing. saucer. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I so mean, now that how about like a like an actual like a flying saucer that's actually floats and like revolves. Yeah, yeah, you could. I I think Ooh. we've seen we've seen some UFOs in Decentraland. Yeah, but that would be my house though. That'd be freaking. Yeah, cool. I'm okay. I got I got new ideas. But still, even if I did that, you would still be like, what's the point, dude? No, I, I would at least appreciate, like, the uniqueness. Okay. Because, so, you know, it's unique. So you just don't like the, the style of the houses currently? Well, it's not that I, I don't like them. It's just I just, I, I, I don't, I want to know what people are going to be doing. Like, I, I don't know. I think if, yeah. I don't know if just flexing on NFTs is, like, you know what? Like when incentive. when I played World of Warcraft, that was one of my biggest desires. Like I was like, man, I wish I had my own house in this world. You know, to do what? Just to like like when I'm ready to log out, maybe it'll give you like some kind of like uh, experience bonus if you log oh, out in your own house. Well, see, now there's an incentive to yes. have a house. Well, you could totally program some type of incentive in these houses. You know, think outside the box a little bit. But my just not erasing that. Even just to come home and just like pretend. <laughs> like <laughs> a little bit of role play action here, dude. I just spent like six hours grinding, and like my character's tired. I want to come <laughs> home, and like maybe he'll take off all of the armor and like store it. And then I, when I log off, back back on, I just like put my armor back on and go back out into the world. Yeah, there's a little bit of role play, dude. Like it, role play is inevitable in Decentraland, dude. Whether you like it or not, it's coming. You know what? I think about Decentraland within the when, within its current limits, uh -huh. and I don't think beyond its current limits. Like, for example, like, watching TV inside the house. Well, right now it's not possible, so I'm not thinking about it. But why not? That's how, like, innovation gets created. You're like, well, yeah. You think about but what's you gotta, missing, right? But you got to go request it from Decentraland. Like, right. we need streaming. I was like, well, why? I was like, because we need it. Because that adds, like, a whole layer to the, like I said, all these oh, houses. Yeah. All of a sudden you got shareable. So that's another thing. It's not shareable. Like, like whatever's Wait, being displayed on TV, not everyone's going to be able to oh, watch the same content. Well, but if it was, like, streaming, then you, you should be able to see it. That would be the best. That would be ideal. Like I said, the first idea that popped in my head when I found out about Decentraland was a, a house with a TV in it where I could invite all my friends to log in and let's all watch the football game on Sundays together and just, like, shoot the shit. Yeah. That was it. Because, you know, yeah. that's if we're all too lazy and, like, we don't, you know, it's, it's everyone like, lives far apart. Yeah. So it's like we're all watching, like, supporting the same sports team, whatever the hell. And we're yeah. just, like, in our virtual reality. Yeah, I remember uh, once dancing was enabled in Decentraland, <laughs> like you had, you got a kick out of it. Oh yeah, dude, because that's like, that's everything. That's everything from a social perspective. Meaning, yeah. like all of a sudden, there's personality <laughs> into this world. Before we're all just like static robots with no emo no like semblance to like uh, huma humans. Yeah, yeah humans. Know? Yeah. Um, emoting is huge when it comes to this, like for social, like body language, you know, just, just by like running in front of somebody you just saw, you met and you could just throw wave a piece. Yeah. Or, you know, I think it needs to be expanded. We need like hundreds of emojis. Yeah. Or emotes. But yeah. Why wouldn't I get a kick out of that, dude? That was the shit. Yeah. <laughs> and they keep changing the dances for some reason. Like they had a good one and now it's like a not so good one. Yeah. It's like a little jiggle. Yeah. A little <laughs> hip and a little pop, a little lock. <laughs> Yeah, but before it was like a full-on robot. Yeah, dance. it was legit. Yeah, I wonder if that was like I think it might cause too much lag. No, like. it's not that. I think it, they're just trying different. They're showing off all the little <laughs> emotes that they had. I think because like it, 
at one point, if you spam the wave too much, it, it, it did lag everything. Yes, it did <laughs> the lag. The fucking <laughs> universe collapsed on itself. <laughs> if you fucking did more than three waves, dude. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. <laughs> it did. It was unplayable when you were waving. Yeah. <laughs> you could just disrupt everyone's gameplay. It's like, yeah. fuck you, dude. I'm like, I'm just going <laughs> to sit here and wave. It's too much to handle, too much movement, I guess. Oh, man. But see, it's little things like this that, like, the average casual everyday gamer will not tolerate. But, like, us, we're willing to deal with this because we know it's early days. You know. Yeah, I feel like uh, traditional gaming has kind of spoiled our expectations. Wait, because it's like a super polished product that's had more than 30 years to develop, you know? You know, but, you know, the trend these days for the last five or so years, like, games come out unfinished. Like indie? It, well, not even indie, like AAA games. Really? Yeah, remember, um, uh, what's that That one where the world gets nuked? <laughs> Fortnite? No, the <laughs> other one. A famous one. The world one. gets nuked? Fallout. Fallout. Oh, Fallout. Yeah. That came out recently, and it was a complete mess. It was a train wreck. Why? Like, nothing is full of glitches and all wow. kinds of stuff. Like, it was unplayable for the most part. See, I don't understand that. How, how, yeah, how, how is they, that possible? How they release that? Yeah, I don't know. That's like a It's because giant... they're a business, and they need to make revenue, and they're like, well, just release it and deal with the consequences. It's like deadlines, basically. Yeah, basically. Like, so the studio they're under. Yeah, that's, like, that's all it is. Yeah. That's all it is. Like, they, they have a game, doesn't work. The, we ran out of time, so we launched it so we can recoup some of the money. And then uh, for those that complain a lot, you get your money back, and that's it. That's, I mean, think if of you're it, lucky, think you get it's, your money it's, back. It's the, it's the equivalent of like a crappy movie, basically. A crappy movie, like like a crappy game that's like not fully you know, oh well, polished yeah. and good. It's the same. Yeah. Meaning, like they just didn't deliver. Well, it's worse way. than that because they didn't they didn't finish their work. A crappy movie, you know, you have bad actors, you have low Maybe low th- budget. But yeah, but if it, it's more likely to like, they're not gonna add in like top tier yeah, special effects. Yeah, maybe. some of my favorite movies are indie indie movies, like really? independent films, like Saw. Well, the, yeah, yeah, Saw's that's good. That, that's, that's a good one. I don't know if that was an independent film though. I think I, mean, I don't know. Either, I mean, it was had it, a low it, budget. But, yeah, it looked very low. But budget. I don't think it was independent though. Yeah, I don't know. Well, so what's an indie movie you like? Um, shit, there's a lot of them. Like uh, Train to Busan. Never seen that. <laughs> keep going keep going i bet you i haven't seen any of these but keep going uh parasite i don't know if parasite was uh any movie though i haven't seen that either it's it everyone liked that movie um so so basically like foreign movies is what you're saying well yeah <laughs> in these case in these cases there like were foreign not, movies. like non-hollywood yeah. movies um district nine was not a indie movie but it was very close i mean it had a budget a huge a budget. big one, yeah. Yeah, it had a huge budget. Yeah. It was close to being an indie movie, but it wasn't. Mm. Uh, but anyway, so um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of other other things that we want to talk about for for <sighs> Decentraland because I mean, we, we talked about Metazone. We we talked about yeah, I mean, how well it was it was doing. I mean, <sighs> all, all we're left to, to do with now. I mean, we have tons of work constantly now because like we have people who depend on us now. Yeah, that, did, that didn't exist like a month ago. Shit, it didn't exist five days ago. Well, now it's like severe. But before the launch, we were selling some of these metas, so you know, there's a little bit of action of deve- like yeah. growing. But yeah, post launch, all of a sudden, it's like, dude, oof. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, like I said, the the strategy was build MVPs, minimum viable products. Yeah. Test and make sure that they they're selling. Mm-hmm. We've tested it. They've sold, mm-hmm. and now we're starting to automate everything. Yeah, luckily, like shout outs to Last Room again. You can't get enough yeah. shout outs for all the work that you're doing. He's like behind the scenes. Yeah, especially Just, Last Room and Corv. Corv is the guy building it like one man, like fucking. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I I, I think I think he's getting overwhelmed too because like a lot of the feedback for some of our games are like glitches, right? And he's yeah. trying his best to like keep up with all that, and but it's like you know, well, yeah, he lot. can't, he can't, he just can't keep up with it. It's a lot. Yeah, we wish we had more people. <laughs> yeah, but you know we're we're like bootstrapping it as hard as possible, dude. Like we're not. Yeah, this, you know, this, this is as, this is like as epitome of bootstrap. This is as strapped as boots get, dude. <laughs> 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 like, we're, we're we're very close to like living we're on losing all, the boots. all ramen diet for the next <laughs> few months, dude. Like Jesus Christ, we're kind of thin, man. Like you know, we're we're doing See, this out of like pure. I don't even know what interest, like a fascination. Uh, yeah, I don't know what it is either. Yeah, because like you know, 
We could just go get jobs and get paid. <laughs> <laughs> we're, not, we're not doing that, dude. Oh. We're sacrificing a part of ourselves for this, you know, because we really yeah. believe in it. You know, we do. I do. We yeah, do. but uh, obviously things have their time limit, and <sighs> yeah, at some point, if if things, I see that's what we were talking about, man. Yeah, like, I I know. I that's the thing I don't want. Like, yeah, we're building like a nice little Discord um, with a lot of buzz in it and stuff. People are interested because you know launch just happened. But, like, if things progress the way I think, like, we're going to have some kind of, like, Decentraland winter, mm-hmm. post post chest or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> <laughs> like, all of a sudden, like, we can count the daily users, like, daily concurrent users in, like, a couple of hands. Yeah. Dude, we got some serious, serious issues here, man. Yeah, like, we do. As far as, like, keeping people interested. Like, yeah. Like, you know, people, yeah, people it's, like Lastrum. It's not only us. It's Decentraland as a whole. Yeah, exactly. All of us face this grim potential like if if yeah, we don't see, figure out as a collective to like you know get this shit ramping up this grim potential s- says it all because yeah. it has so much potential but again it feels like you know with all the stuff that we built we've proven everything out yet w- it seems like we're we're the only ones like doing something well it's because we understand like um <clears throat> That's why we built MetaZone, dude. We understood the problem. We understood why yeah, developers exactly. weren't developing. Like, because they don't have access to, like, this expensive ass. The land is so expensive, like, yeah, you know, you have to put forth, like, a pretty nice, like, investment just to even test if your yeah. product is any good. Yeah, that's, you know? that's right. That's and right. if you own these, this land, it's you're mostly just speculating with it. So we're like, dude, there's, there's a bridge there that hasn't been. It's you know, funny. You go to the, the center um, parcel, the, the Genesis Plaza in the center, you go around that perimeter. Like all the plots are empty. That's true. All dude. of them are empty. And those are the most expensive ones. Those are the most expensive ones. There's a reason for this. Yes. You, know? yes. you would think if you were a developer, you would want your shit to be there because that's the highest trafficked area and you're going to get the most. Yeah. Well, it's supposed to be, but right now it isn't. Yeah. Probably nobody's walking through those streets, you know? Nobody. Nobody. Everyone's just teleporting everywhere. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we have a parcel relatively, like, walking distance from Genesis Plaza. And it's, re- it's, 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 uh, it's a roadside it's a it, parcel. Yeah, it's a roadside yeah. parcel. No traffic. Main road, dude. Nothing. On your way to Fashion District. Yeah. There's nothing that is there. prime real estate. And you know how many, like, plays I've gotten there? Like, <laughs> zero. zero. That's, like, become our testing ground because yeah. we know no one's going to be there. Yeah. <laughs> that's where, that's the area where there's no lag. Yeah, it's, like, clean because there's, like, nothing around me. Yeah. Yeah, and I spent, like, almost $4,000 on that fucking parcel, <laughs> dude. That thing was expensive. See, the, these are the kind of things, man, like, it that that could break the entire thing. Yeah. 100%. Like, this, this inability to, like leverage like the the fact that that parcel is so expensive and because it's so expensive there's nothing built on top of it yeah exactly and and that's that's and, what and metazone if, solves if that person knew that we existed and had like an idea that they could generate some revenue mm-hmm. you know they might be interested in employing one of our games our games or your games whoever wants to make yeah games, whoever you know. anybody okay so or that's the n- thing not even games like, like we got to be part. clear MetaZone is not about only our games. It's not. It is about games that are created by the community that can be submitted by the community and that the community can deploy them from the MetaZone without much interaction with the actual creator. So Well, you you want s- yeah, without much, I guess, yeah. Without much. I mean, we don't we don't want like a as like a creator like abandonment scenario where like they create something yeah. and just leave it. That's why yeah. we have the the split that we we have programmed into the uh, the platform, the twenty percent, yeah, is ev- everything that that Meta uh, brings in is always going to the creator, for the reason of you know we want these creators to stick around to and continue kinda, like updating it because the central yeah. land, you know, with the DAO and it's we're gonna always, see yeah. some updates. These updates break stuff a lot, very often, almost every time. Yeah, and uh, so, you yeah. know, it's, it, we need developers to continue updating, <laughs> otherwise your games won't make revenue or your game breaks or your game doesn't work, whatever it is. Yeah, like, and, like, we have plans at some point in the future, like, we need a reputation platform for the creators themselves, too. So that way there's a track record, a history of whether or not these creators are actually living up to their responsibilities as yeah. a creator. Yeah. You know, just like somebody, like a plumber comes to your house and, like, fixes your fucking plumbing, 
you you want to leave a rating, right? Something just to, if he if he gave you a bad experience, just ruined your whole septic, yeah, <laughs> network or whatever. You're gonna give him one star because you want to warn either warn people or like get some kind of like yeah some kind of uh, justice for being screwed over. You know, we need that. That has to be a part of it. I think. Yeah. No, I, mean, I, I totally agree. I totally agree. I know that's going to be hard to pull off and stuff, but I feel like it's a need. Yeah. You know? But regardless, we're just trying to, like, I don't know, man. We're trying to... Man, we're trying to, like, fucking survive. <laughs> like. Yeah. I I, I just don't... I, what, what else are we doing here, man? I'm looking at a crooked elephant right now. <laughs> There's, like, a giant <laughs> elephant that he's looking at in Decentraland. I mean, like I said, this is that cool stuff that, like, dude, what is this? This is tripping me out. Yeah. But, like, yeah, but you were like, dude, why? Yeah, why? Why? But this is, this is tripping. They took, they took an elephant model and stretched his legs. That's it. And he's a little tilted. And, yeah. And that's about it. But see what's going to happen? I, I looked at it for a solid 20 seconds and move, see ya. Move on. Never oh, come moving back. On. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't have a reason to come back to that. You know? that's That is the problem. Yeah. Here. <sighs> but I don't damn, know, man. Dude, it's are, just, are we being like, at, are we being shitty? I don't know. I don't know either. I don't know. Cause uh, things went well for us, dude. I think it went. Okay. The, let, it, let, went, let, it went the best for us. Yeah. Decentraland, they adjusted very well to their day one problems. Yeah, for sure. So we'll give them credit for that for sure. Yeah, absolutely. They're working hard. They're not out there like just like on yacht parties and shit. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> they're actually grinding away with us. You know, they're, they're working just like we are. And yeah. uh, so that's a that's a plus. That's another plus. Yeah, I know. I totally agree. I mean, those guys, they're busting their ass and they're like, they deserve a vacation after <laughs> five days. Yeah. You know, I mean, we see. I've seen some cool stuff too, like uh, the Infinity Engine. Oh cool yeah, spot. for sure. Infinity Tomb Engine, yeah, that that was. See, that's Tomb the stuff that we need. Tomb Runner, good as fuck. Like yes, Tomb ex Runner executed Toxic beautifully. Sam yeah, man. From poly Polygonal Mind, that that was great. It it's like near impossible to play on my laptop just because of like my laptop shits here. But as soon as I got on my desktop, dude, that shit was awesome. Like that game so. See, the, those experiences are great, but we're talking about replayable experiences. Like, like it has to be. You have to want to come back and replay for a particular reason, whether it's an NFT or yeah. whatever you can think of. I'm not. I don't want to limit ourselves to just like mana and NFTs. Yeah, man. That's why, like, if you go back a few podcasts ago, like, I've, I've been talking about this whole closed loop economy and get people working. Like, you call it a click farm. I, yeah. call, I call it, like, a revolution. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude. Dude. No. Yes, man. Like, again, another thing that this, um, this launch proved to me is people are willing to do, like, painfully menial tasks. Is that the word? Menial? menial? Yeah. I don't know, like a really crappy task. Yeah. As long as there's like some kind of financial incentive at the end of the tunnel, and that's basically what I post. No, that's true. It's mm -hmm. just, do you want to do that? Like, do you want to like actually implement that, execute that? I don't know. That that's I don't know. The, that's, that's a question I've been asking myself for a long time. But I I seriously think like in order to attract like a core population here, that's the way to do it. You get people coming who are just here to exploit the platform for their benefit. Yeah. That's it. And however you end up, uh, you know, supplying that, I don't know. Yeah. But the way I think of it is, like, like with our games, like y you said this, like, imagine all the activity that we're experiencing in our game is, like, us gathering energy, essentially, right? Oh, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, like, <coughs> e every jump. That's true. All That's this, true. all this activity on our games and our land can be like, ga I guess, like gamified. It's yes. In, as in, like, let's say, like, we have the block runner and we bought this meta, and the reason we bought it is because it generates NFTs. Yes. As a landowner, if you own this, you can generate NFTs, but no NFTs. You're never receiving an NFT unless you can attract players. To play yeah. on That's this block That's what I'm runner. talking about, man. To That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, to generate the energy to yes. produce an NFT. Thank you. So we got uh, this closed loop system. So you got to attract players because they're supplying the work needed for the energy dude. of the production of the NFT. You got it. Right? I'm I'm in. <laughs> I'm in, dude. I mean, we could do that with our games. Like, no, 
we should be doing with our games. What are you talking about? Well, l- l- let's let Oscar watch this and see what he says. Okay. I mean, if y'all are watching, if you made it this far, we're at like an, exactly an hour yeah. mark. If you made it this far, we just spitballed a new idea. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> how it's done. Because this is an everyone wins scenario. We know NFTs yes. are the shit, and yes. everybody wants NFTs. So landowners have money, usually, so they could invest in this type of yes. infrastructure. Like, if they knew it was gonna be, they're going to get rewarded with NFTs. But players, now all of a sudden, they have an opportunity to... So how would that work? Well, players still have... <clears throat> they're... Um, yeah, what's the player return? Is it the same exact pot daily mechanic? pot mechanics? It's not like a, everyone gets paid out equally just yeah. like jumping their asses off. No? Yeah, no. Because that's how I have it in my head. Like, n- no, you can't pay those guys because <sighs> it, it's like um, it's an economy, right? It's it's a circulation of resources. Yeah, so like the the landowner is producing this valuable NFT. And and let's say it takes him like a certain amount of jumps required from yes, players. Yes, and once you as a player score a hundred jumps. You get paid twenty mana, yeah. And then, like, once you've paid as the landowner, you've paid out two hundred mana to ten different people. Yeah, you get this NFT, and then so, you know, based on economics, he has to value this NFT higher than what he, it costs to make it to produce it. You yeah, know? because it took work. It took it, work. It took work to make and money. It's, it's not the same as coming is like like NFTs designing out of thin air, right? Yeah, designing a, a new shirt that has. To, you know, a mythic shirt with 10, you know, in existence. I mean, that's just exactly. NFT out of thin, out air. thin air. Like this, this type of creation is going to collapse. Yeah. Right. You cannot keep making mythic shirts and, <laughs> and expect this to like sustain. Yeah. Like as a matter of fact, Frankie is already complaining about well, Frankie this. Frankie is like our freaking uh, NFT he, dude, whale, dude. He's like, he was like, the, he was like the first guy in our discord. He was. And so he's, he's already complaining about a flood of mythics. Well, he lost all incentive to continue with the hunt because he realized, like, okay, everyone's finding the same shit, and they're all putting them on the market, and they're all completely devalued. It's not even worth him attempting to earn them. He might as well just buy them and flip them. And, yeah, yeah. You know, because he's, he's driven by the money, and smart man. <laughs> you yeah. know, that's we're all driven by the same thing, but he's he's not ashamed to admit it, you know? Yeah, I, I, I just see a future where there's so many mythics out there that mm-hmm. – the valuable one, valuable ones are the ones that you want, and that's that's yeah. it. Yeah. But I mean, so, but damn, man, it's like, what do you think? Okay, again, what do y'all think? Yeah. <laughs> like, would that make sense? I don't know. So, so there's and we're just using our game as an example. A, a simpler, reduced version of this again is like literally a, a refinery. Like, if you guys participated in, in this this chest event, there was tons of builders scenes where all you're doing is like pulling levers. Yeah. Yeah. Pushing buttons, like, you know, what if there's, like, a refinery where there's, like, five slots for people to occupy, like, you're yeah. going to work, what? and literally all you're doing all day is, like, chee, 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 chee. you're just messing with knobs. Would you be willing to do that if you knew you were getting paid, like, at least yeah. five to let's, ten bucks an hour? Yeah, say. I want. I, let's pose that question. Would you, would you be willing to do that? Like, if you can make at least five to ten dollars an hour... So no way, dude. We're, five dollars an hour, dude. No yeah. way. That's so could, way too much. But then, could you imagine the value of those NFTs, though, for the landowner? So he's he's generating some serious valuable NFTs. Yeah, I mean, I, it's a it's a valid question. It is. It's just this is like some kind of yeah. I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. And is that's it like tough. Is, is it worth us? It's a gamble. This is like a straight. Because that's new stuff. I feel like. See what I think is if we we give the landowner. That meta that you're talking about that generates these NFTs mm-hmm. based upon the activity of his games on his land. That works too. Yeah. And then it gives him an even more incentive to encourage players to play on his land. Mm. And I think that is further like reinforcing the idea of, you know, but, players getting into Decentraland. But then it's like, let me think about this. Hmm. So and on top of that, uh, on top of wanting more creators to come onto MetaZone and like submit their creations, th- we have a platform to rent land. If you're looking for a platform that that you you want to use to rent out your land that you don't, you don't have anything to put on there, mm-hmm. like there's there's an opportunity with MetaZone to do that. It's very simple. We we we're, we're using it right now essentially. It's just there's a little bit of, you know, tweaks that we have to make, but 
it's uh it's there right everybody's talking about these renting mechanics and smart contracts and dude let's just use metazone it's already deployed there's a lack of content clearly right just because you have like valuable land doesn't mean somebody wants to deploy something on there. Yeah. And if they do, it's probably a builder. And we don't want like a million block runners out there either. Like that's why we're setting limits to these games, you know? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, okay. Yeah. Forgot about that. It's going to So do, on yeah. top of everything that we're doing, we're making our games NFTs. Exactly. Because for, for a few reasons. For a few reasons. One of them is scarcity, right? That's one, one reason. Yeah. But why, why, why scarcity? Well, because we don't want a million block runners well, for, out there. Yeah, for that, personally, yeah. Why? Because that's going to dilute the whole ecosystem. Yeah. Like, if there's a million of these things, like, they become worthless, right? Yeah. And then, uh, there's and then another reason. There's there's no no <laughs> incentive to play because they're, like, down the corner and... Yeah, we just don't want too many of these things. So we need a way to verify, verifiably well, prove and that on, there's on only And on top of that, the landowners that. want to be sure that they're investing in a... And an asset that's not going to depreciate based True. on, you know, an infinite saturation, number. Yeah, yeah, based on saturation. Yeah, and so that's how we thought of that because, like, somebody. Well, no, Oscar thought of this like way earlier on. Yeah, like, he did. Something clicked in his head. He's like, "Dude, NFTs," and like for a couple months, we're just like, nah. "Yeah, we're sleeping on it." But then, like, somebody during like a negotiation for like a meta, he's like, "You know what? I'll pay a higher price for this meta if I am a hundred percent certain there's only going to be a limited number of these." Yeah. Like if 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 this thing could, if there could eventually be a hundred to two hundred block runners, I'll, I don't even want to pay more than like a couple thousand mana. Yeah, because there's so much uncertainty. But if I know there's only gonna be twenty five or ten or whatever, yeah, yeah, I'm willing to. Yeah, I, out I totally agree. It makes sense. So yeah. we're like we're doing it. Yeah, and it gives <laughs> us the incentives. Like once we run out of metas or games to sell, like it's our yeah. opportunity to make another one. Yeah, like and, a, and, a different it, game. Yeah, and it gives like the the purchaser of these metas like so much more flexibility. Now it's like yeah, now they can go in and sell it on OpenSea. They can put it put them in auction. Like for example, yeah. there's a chance that you could sell a block runner game NFT like for five hundred thousand mana. You know, on on OpenSea. Yeah. Like there's, I'm pretty sure we're undervaluing these metas. We are. We're basically giving them out for less than like a lot of these wearables, dude. Oh, dude! This blows my it's mind. It's not even close. Yeah, a lot of these were okay. We have ten. If we'll have ten block runners, what would you rather have? <laughs> if there's yeah. only ten block runners or ten pack runners, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Would you rather have a like a a twenty a twenty thousand mana g- game? Yeah. <laughs> that's gener that has the potential to generate enough revenue to kind of like recoup that 20,000 maybe over like six months yeah if you do your part as a, like a as a good land host your marketing your shilling yeah this is a franchise exactly if yeah. you do your part if you just put it out there and leave it alone it might take a couple years to get your 20,000 back yeah but if you put in the work six months you would you better have that or, or like, like a fucking mask or something mask. like that that you just put on like nobody, no one gives a shit that you have that yeah nobody <laughs> gives a shit that you just don't yeah what would you rather have that's another question for the comments yeah you know? So, but that's we're basically selling these for like ten thousand a pop, and the price does go up after every sell. Yeah, but once they're yours, you know they're they're yours. It's yours, man. Yeah. You could, if you get six months of revenue and you're happy with that, put the meta back on the marketplace and let somebody else buy it from you. Yeah, and then you have six months of data to show like how much money you generate on it. That's right. That increases the value of it. That's right. You know, that's exactly the tactic you use when somebody was looking into buying a meta. Right, you went yeah. to uh, Anorak's analytics because Anorak's our, he's like our um, our model host right now. Yes. You know, he's doing everything like we want our hosts to do. So I was like, this guy he posed a question. He's like, what's uh what's the return? How, how are the hosts doing so yeah. far? And then I was like, okay, let me pull up Anorak's numbers after like it's only like three days of data at so the it's, time. It's yeah. not like the most reliable data, but it's, it's what we That's, got. It's, it's all, all we, we have. have. So I showed him like a daily average return. And uh, I'm like, okay, so, and then the price of this meta was like 10000 or 11000 mm-hmm. And I showed him at the end of the year, if he maintains this kind of... Uh, Activity. Yeah, this kind of payout every day for 365 days, he's going to end up with like 35000 mana. mana, which is like 3 or 4x of what he invested to that's buy right. it. That's right, that's right. So that's like a no-brainer purchase. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because once, like after month three, at, you're and then just at, generating pure, pure... And the, well, actually, from day one, you're generating pure um, profit because because the, it's an asset. It's an NFT. Yeah. I mean, from day one, you could just flip it. Maybe it's an undervalued asset. You flip, you put it on the market. You can make an instant ten thousand mana if it's that undervalued. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. We don't even know. We don't know the true value of these things. Yeah. 
we're just kind of like ball. Like and, just and then after you there. after you explained that to him, he was like, "Well, why are you selling it so cheap?" I was like, "Because yeah. we, uh, because yeah, it's hard know, to know. We don't know how much these things are worth." Yeah. We think these things are probably priced pretty properly. They're like eventually like the average price of these things after we sell them all out uh, will probably be around 15,000 mana, which is the price of a par- like an average parcel in Decentraland. Yeah. Which I think makes sense. You buy a piece of land and then you invest like some kind of a uh, revenue generating business to put yeah. on top of it. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. So I think we're in the, in the right ballpark and like these wearables are not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> these things need to come down way more, I feel like. Yeah, and then last room is going to build a store, uh, a Decent- uh, Decentraland store, a basically a meta that when you're walking around in in Decentraland, it's this meta that you can interact with that will deploy other metas to your land from within Decentraland. You don't you don't have to leave Decentraland. Yeah, so which is <clears throat> nasty. Yeah, and then from there you can buy NFTs of all kinds, right? From metas to like shirts and masks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right totally. from right from Decentraland, you don't have to go to Open Sea. It's right there. It's basically the same thing. It's just within the within the game world. Yep. Like, yep. but like, yeah. Again, like, and, and like I said, we don't want just our games out there taking advantage of this. Like, we're building the platform for everyone to participate. Yeah. If you have an idea in your head for like a cool meta, you know, bring it. Yes. We want it. We want it out there. Yeah. All right. So, um, so I think that covers everything. I'm enough. I, th- I think, yeah, I think we've, uh, <laughs> we got to go back to work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I make it sound like I don't, but I actually do. Dude, one of the most, uh, I'm so glad I thought of this. One of the most surreal things that happened to me over the last four or five days was whenever I was, I was, uh, talking to somebody who wanted to purchase a meta. And then I like went into Decentraland to kind of yeah. like give them a virtual tour, a tour of it. Yeah. Dude, it was the most <laughs> fucking weird thing I've ever done, dude. I was like talking to him. In game, I'm like, you know, like, hey, like, you know, look at these cool things. Like, yeah. I, obviously, I wasn't saying, I was just, I feel like we're like one of the, maybe besides Second Life and stuff like that, we're like one of the first people to like yeah, virtually. That brings up a good point. Like, I felt like I was in a Black Mirror episode type thing. Like, this oh, very sure. weird, very weird for sure. feeling I got. Like, when I, when I, when I was doing it. Yeah. And then I just thought about it, like, what the fuck well, is going what on are we right doing? now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like a virtual realtor or a virtual. So, like business, I I guess very weird. We have prototypes of this existence, right? In, in Second, Second Life. Life, yeah, that's the best one you could probably think of. And uh, in Second Life, it was successful to a certain extent. I don't know what what made it end. I think it was just from like it heard, got old or whatever. I don't know either, but from what I heard, like around 2007, with its peak, and it, it it was like near a billion dollar economy. Like there's billion. Wow, because I know they were making shirts too, and I know they were Everything. making that had. They're everything, land. yeah, everything was for sale. Everything, yeah, and they were more like focused on like realism. Yeah, and it was like a second life. Like you go yeah. and you spend time there. You go to jail. <laughs> exactly. Like it's the time is time. Like time is like absolute. Mm-hmm. Right. If you go to jail for two weeks, you're there for two weeks. Yeah. So I mean, that was a massive. I think it was a massive success story, I, yeah. but it didn't maintain. I mean, I think there's still like tons of people playing that more than Decentraland right now, but you know, it didn't like snowball into like a freaking multi billion dollar thing. Yeah. Which I think it probably could have, but I think something happened where it like stopped that from happening. But yeah. Either way, it, like it that's would, how I felt. I it, felt like Yeah. Something it was very, very weird, meta. Dude. I guess, dude. Yeah. I'm like, dude. I was like, dude. I'm like one of the first people to do some weird shit like this. This, this could be beca- like, this could become, yeah, dude, like a massive <laughs> thing in the future. Like a massive economy, it's just people like virtually selling virtual things. Yeah, yeah. like in VR worlds. Yeah, like you know, you're making actual. You're you're making. It's a business in this world that pays your bills. Yeah, I it, thought that was fucking insane. And then on top of that. <clears throat> You, you technically you won't be able to shut down Decentraland. This is going to outlive us if if it's implemented correctly. True. And there's going to be people who stand up servers just to keep it alive for for decades potentially. Mm-hmm. And like an investment right now, as early as we are, um, you know, it could turn you know have some benefits to it. Yeah. But. It's really hard to visualize that right now, especially with this still empty canvas. True. So I guess, yeah, we're going to have to end it here pretty soon. But yeah. now, now I'm thinking like, 
you know, what's this podcast going to consist of now, you know? Yeah. Because <laughs> we can't, we're, is it really going to be interesting to be like, all right, guys, like captain's log, like this is what we did this week. Yeah. You know, like, like, you know, we added this new feature. I mean, we should, but I don't know, man. Dude, <laughs> yeah. I guess we're, we're, we're running out of bandwidth, that's for sure. Are we? Yeah. I don't know. Doing a captain's log? Come on. Yeah. Like, yeah, at this point now, our, yeah, our well, main focus is going to be like just, just like riding just, the treadmill, you know. Yeah, basically. Running, running. Yeah, basically making sure that everybody's happy in MetaZone and like our yeah. Discord, and on top of that, I guess we need to collect everybody's emails too because it's true. Our monthly tournaments are predicated on <laughs> contacting you, <laughs> which is another problem. You cannot communicate with people. Yeah, in that's this the fucking exactly. world, dude. That is, I cannot believe that is not a feature. Uh, Decentraland devs, this is a call out. We need some interface to collect emails within the world. Or at least, like, we have everybody's name and address. At least let us, like, contact them within Decentraland. Like, so where they log yeah. in, they can at least get a message from us or something. Yeah. Simple. Something. Something. Simple. Anything. Like, why isn't it's it there like, yet? <laughs> I don't know, man. But we've got nothing. So, yeah, this is a little problem for us. Perhaps we're too early. Perhaps we're right on the money, but like two years too early. Maybe, yeah. I don't know. And I think that's why like they're holding back on like really shilling this platform, like marketing. Like Anorak, he brought up something interesting. He tweeted something interesting. Yeah. It was like a basically calling them out, right? Uh like, marketing, yeah. His his like outlook <laughs> on the whole Decentraland. Yeah, he was more disappointed gate. by like the lack of marketing. marketing. Yeah. Yeah. And I understand like Decentraland's response. Yeah, me too. I understand it. It, it too. was like, well, this isn't exactly what people need to see yet about Decentraland. So, yeah, like they, they pretty much, I think they knew like this is going to be a cluster. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like towards the launch, you know? Yeah. Like, I mean, of course they knew like they're in control of everything. So they knew it wasn't going to be like a polished thing. Yeah. So they know that's like, that's not something you want to present to like a, a broader audience. Right. So they're, I think they're, strategically waiting for like a uh, more polished i i do think it was a good shot uh, the 48 chess and like the oh yeah it's just yeah like it was cool i, I actually enjoyed yeah pursuing these chests it's it yeah. wasn't bad it's it just wasn't bad. day one was bad day one we didn't was know what we were doing bad but it really wasn't that bad now some of the meta i mean what metas some of the like builder stuff yeah like that was really bad like the performance of them, the perfor performance, like the the whole concept, the idea, the execution, like the the fortitude to follow through on the idea, as crappy as it was, <laughs> like all of it. I like some of them, but yeah, I don't want to hate like totally on the builder, but well, I I don't know. Man. It doesn't matter, man. Yeah. Fuck it. Anyways, all right. So yeah, let's. So again. Join our Discord if you uh, hate what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, let us know. What let we're us doing know if you like what we're doing. Let us know too. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Just uh, like we posed a couple questions. Like, please answer them. Like. Yeah. Fuck, man. It's it's two o'clock in the morning. Is it? W what are we this doing? Is, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this is my my life now, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but like I said, this is cool. Like, yeah, this was this is good stuff, man. I I, I don't know. Like I said, that that moment was surreal. Yeah, yeah. And I, I'm actually like I'm I'm playing off like I'm dying or like like I'm not enjoying all of this, but I actually am. No, I mean it, it's lot. interesting. Like I refresh EtherScan, there's like 50 new transactions every morning. Yeah, it was like oh shit, it's still going. Yeah, you know, just watching all this evolve is what I like the most. You know, hopefully this turns into like an actual thing where it's like. Like I, I, Oscar's big model of life is like he doesn't want to like work a day in his life. Like, yeah, I, I feel like the poor guy is like super <laughs> overwhelmed, but at the same time, I feel like he's okay because he's doing what he loves, right? Yeah, he, for he's, sure. He's programming, he's coding, he's building. Yeah, that's what he loves to do. But at the same time, I think he's like borderline about to kill himself. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But I, I like this too. But it's it is stressful at times, but. I mean, yeah. it's what we signed up for, man. We did this. Yeah, yeah. We did this to ourselves. We did. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, I just no. had to get that out there. No, I totally agree. Not look like I'm some kind of like, like man, fuck all. Like, this is too much. No, like, that's true. That's true. I, I mean, I had my own surreal experiences, too, like trying to explain this to my family. Oof. Like, 
you, you, it's it's extremely difficult to to explain. <laughs> Yeah, <clears throat> but ultimately, it's you know I tell them it's the same technology as Bitcoin. You can't shut this down anymore, and it seems like a, an investment early on is probably a good idea, and that's what we're doing. True that. True that. So, having said that, make sure you uh, you join our Discord again and follow us on Twitter, and um, that's it. We'll see you next week, hopefully, if we're still alive. Oh, we'll be good, dude. <laughs> Flying. <laughs> Oh, yeah. All right, guys. Peace out.